Welcome, and in the series of when detox is dangerous and how heavy metal detox is done right. This is my wife, Marilee, and I asked her to, uh, to be a part of this series and a part of the interviews that we've done about heavy metals. And in my case, in my story, which I told, um, my story was about mercury, but yours is a little different. Your story was more about lead. Uh, what are the chances that God would allow two people in the same life uh, to have two heavy metal stories? You see why we're passionate about this topic. Uh, you know, but there's many people watching this with hormone problems, and really that's why I brought you on, because uh, your lead levels really were the ultimate cause of many bizarre symptoms that you went through uh, that were really related to your hormones. And I think it was years of trying to figure out certain things with your hormones that we really didn't know what was wrong until we realized it was your lead level. We ran the correct test, which I talk about obviously in the article series. Um, but I want you to share with them a little bit about what you were experiencing, uh, because I know many people will relate to that. So talk about some of the symptoms and you know how we ended up here. Well, first of all, it was actually kind of comforting when I did find out that I had high lead because I never would have even run the test if it wasn't for the fact that when you were trying to figure out what was wrong with you, mm -hmm. you ran the, merc the heavy metal test right. and found your mercury levels were so high. Right. So of course, everything that Danny does, I want to do. <laughs> so I, I ran the test and my lead was crazy. Mm -hmm. Off and the chart, one of the highest I've ever well, seen. At that time, yeah. of course it was. I think now there's only two people that have me beat and one's a painter. He was a right. painter, did a lot of uh, sanding of lead and lead paint, and uh, yep. his levels were very high. Yes, and then anyway, so I, of course, I thought, oh my gosh, well, what does this actually mean? Mm -hmm. Because I really didn't know. We were so focused on mercury. Mm -hmm. And um, through research and things, you find out that you can't remember what you read. Um, it impairs your IQ you can't remember things. There were, just, there were just certain things that started to make sense to me mm -hmm. when I started looking back on the challenges I had even learning. Because mm -hmm. I always knew I was really bright, but there were certain things I was selective about that I could actually a remember. A ADD, not to embarrass my wife, um, but that was, <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. I mean, honestly, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the lack of attention and focus. Now we have all these studies connecting lead to ADD, right. you know, especially in children, which we're going to talk about our children. Um, you know, but one of the things, you know, when I met you hormonally, you were a mess, right? I mean, I remember, <laughs> now we're going to run. We don't know where this is going to go, folks. This could end up good or it could end up really bad. Uh, but we're willing to do it for the sake of people learning. Um, but, you know, I remember around your period time, uh, you would be in bed, you know, with... 800, things, yeah, 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, right? Yep. And Yeah, I mean, I, so uh, that was not a good time, right? Nope. So you had a lot of struggles. Um, your diet cleaned up a lot of those things. I mean, when you met me, things changed. So, see, we, we weren't going on in this relationship unless she was going to follow the cellular healing diet, folks. We but, weren't uh, quite there yet. Yeah, <laughs> but we were we there. just needed to get me off the hard pretzels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, when I went into her apartment, all I saw was oodles of noodles and peanut butter and hard pretzels. So I, my first thing was, what do you eat? But you know, I went out to dinner a lot, in know, my one, defense. One of the things, though, I mean, in this story is, is you had severe allergies. Um, that you battled every spring and fall. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I remember you laying in bed with all your you know, devices or whatever was going on. That cleared out. I mean, the diet and some intermittent fasting you know, really played a big role in clearing that mm -hmm. out. But the hormone stuff didn't clear out. Right. And that's what really led us, like I said, to the lead level. So we see this very high lead level, and um, we addressed it. And through that process, now we had did a hormone test as well. And during the hormone test, we saw some shocking things. Matter of fact, it was the hormone test that we did on you. It was the same hormone test that Suzanne Summers said saved her life. It definitely saved your life. So tell a little bit about that, because one of the things was, is the hormone test revealed that you were going to end up the same place as your mother. So quickly, just kind of tell that story, because that was one of your fears. And then here we're looking at the test going, wow, you were going to end up just like your mom, who ended up dying of uterine cancer, but she, 10 years before that, had breast cancer. Yeah, well, of course, I don't receive that at all. Right. I thankfully did know that if I followed what this test revealed and did what, it, what I needed to do to undo some of that, which, of course, it's, it's been a process. I think I've yeah. taken three of these tests now. Usually mm -hmm. I do about one a year. 
but it's a it's been a journey yeah and um, I stay fairly consistent mm -hmm. um, obviously the detox was well underway I, when I started mm -hmm. when we learned yeah. more about that particular yeah, right. test we, the test showed your methylation which is part of detox mm -hmm. and part of how you even adapt to stress was bottomed out mm -hmm. um, and then there was another portion of the test that showed that basically you had too much toxic estrogen um, which is really life-saving and, and you would have ended up just like your mom but uh, obviously the test really um, showed us what we needed to support even more through the detox process as we remove the lead right you know one thing I want to point out is is that we would have never have you know each test hormone test improved you know in the hormones obviously through that process but we would have never been able to improve the hormones if we didn't work upstream and remove the lead right. uh, now so tell us a little bit about that because um, you know that process of doing the proper chelation, which these articles really, you know, talk about. Um, how was that for you? Because, I mean, I, I think that, again, on cycle, off cycle. Um, day two, when I get on cycle, I'm usually very tired. Mm -hmm. um, I, unlike you, who immediately feel better right. and stay better your whole mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah. I definitely get very tired on day two. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then I just settle into it. I mean, I, I don't really notice a whole lot. I think with lead, for me, it's been more of a cumulative experience mm -hmm. on the whole yeah. and watching I mean there was a time when I was retesting my levels mm -hmm. quarterly and just watching those levels drop come down except come down. for after the first test you know, one, one thing I want to point out to those watching is you know mercury we can clear the body of mercury in two three months and see you know hey the body's empty and what I'd said in one of the past uh, videos where I interviewed Warren Phillips is the mercury's in the brain and that's the big problem, which you can't test for. But lead, you can watch this progression over the years. And just like mercury, it takes years, right? I mean, you chelated for many, many years. I, I think I'm probably at about five, six. Yeah, and lead, by the way, takes longer than mercury because it's stored in the bone. Yes, and now I just kind of pay attention to certain symptoms. If it's been a while and I just am not feeling quite mm -hmm. right, I will do a cycle and I but my that out, yeah. right and but my body now has really set up a concentration gradient mm -hmm. so it Releases. needs the facilitation obviously of DMSA but it still does detox on its own as well mm -hmm. it's just that I like to keep I, I mean obviously my lead was so high that I just want to make sure that I'm getting Meh every bit as much as I can out and knowing what I know about it it takes four generations that's right to get that out as well so I have I mean obviously it's it's affected my children and uh, you know despite everything we knew and everything we didn't know of course at that particular no, time yep. but mm -hmm. um, and it's affected me in such a way that you know I'm absolutely determined to make sure I do everything I can and at a certain point, you mm -hmm. just you know have to trust your body and the process, and yeah. ultimately trust God. And you've kept up on all the cellular formulas the whole time, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which really you know saved your life, no doubt, because the lead can actually turn on certain genes. Uh, and there's no doubt that if we didn't deal with that, it was turning on that same genetic predisposition that your your mom had, um, you know, which had a different outcome than your outcome, obviously. That's uh, again why we're, we're passionate about this topic, obviously. And I, and I grew up in the same house that... I was going to ask you, so my, where did you get the lead right, from? Right, <laughs> so I, not only did I get it from my mother, but yeah. I grew up in the very same home that she did, that Warren's dad did. And so we definitely have had a susceptibility toward... Homes or, built before 1978 were loaded with lead, especially the old homes, especially mm -hmm. when you sand them, reconstruction. Lead dust is all through the house. You're breathing it. Um, the but pipes? Uh, absolutely. The lead pipes. We had an old farmhouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't even have indoor plumbing for no doubt. years. In the lead generation, gasoline had lead in it. We were breathing it. Yep. Um, and you, you had made a comment that I think that they need to hear is lead is, they say it's four generations just to breed it out. So obviously you got your first exposure from your mom. Uh, and that is the number one source of lead, by the way, lead exposure is you get it from mom. When women are pregnant, they lose bone. It's very normal. Um, but out from the bone comes the lead because when you lose the bone the lead comes there it's stored there and where does it go it goes into our children so let's talk about that because obviously your your mom you triggered some you know genes possibly from there the lead can do that but you got your first exposure from mom well our kids were affected by that uh, I remember our kids we raised them very well I mean our kids um, we were very 
cautious about anything that we put in our kids, including vaccinations, et cetera. Um, and yet our kids had major digestive orders and even some sleeping problems. Mm -hmm. So we thought, and you probably remember it better than I, boy, we better test the kids. And sure enough, they had high lead levels, yep. which they got from, uh, from this one. So, and we don't know what they got from me. We won't talk about that. Um, but I know in particular, um, our son Isaac, uh, tell them the story because we actually did something very dumb too with an amalgam <laughs> filling. Tell them that story. That's, that's always, we learned the hard way too, folks. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, even though we've protected our kids in a lot of ways from a lot of things, we've definitely unknowingly made them guinea pigs as well. And it was actually because we had had Daniel and Isaac at, was three at the time when you really were figuring out a lot yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, when Danny was redoing his mouth and trying to do it the right way, which he did, um, of course, at that point, I had five amalgams in my mouth. Remember, she wanted to do everything that I did. Right. <laughs> so I wasn't going to wait right. any longer than I needed to. And so, of course, we, in our finite our understanding our, and our passion. Our overzealousness and passion. Absolutely. Um, we ended up you got how many fillings? Did I you think get I out took out two. Yeah, and you were were you nursing? nursing. You mm -hmm. were nursing with Isaac. So, um, the, the, of course, the mercury vapor, and we didn't follow we, the mistake the number one yeah, was just doing not it. Not doing. See, we learned the hard way. Everything I tell you not to do, believe me, most of it I did myself wrong. And um, she didn't do it the right way. We didn't protect, and a lot of the mercury went into the breast milk. And Isaac got. Um, and I pumped like just once and thought that would be okay. I mean, just, just so never So it went into the breast milk. It. A lot of the mercury vapor went into the breast milk. It affected Isaac. We saw an immediate change in him uh, Well, I after think that. what we really confirmed it by was when we did do the tests on the kids, and Isaac was the only one that had high mercury. And lead. And lead. Yeah. And that, for us, obviously, the only thing we did differently because we did not vaccinate was that we... I had done those two amalgams. I had to have right. them taken out. So it was confirmation that that what wasn't that? what you do. Right. I mean, on the, the flip side of that, we're able to tell a lot of people now when they start inquiring about what to do in their detox process, we are always telling them not. Mm -hmm. Well, and we took our kids through the same process we took ourselves through, by the way. I mean, even as, how old did we start uh, them? I think Isaac was about, he was young. I think he was about four. Danny yeah. was about six. Yeah. They were young. Yeah, I mean, just to show you, I mean, that what we're telling you, we did with our own children. And of course, obviously when it's done right, it's more than safe. Our kids are um, normal today. Well, well, let's not go that far. Yeah, that's another yeah, conversation. Okay, that's another conversation. <laughs> we'll have another video. But uh, yeah, no. But of course. They're you know, pompous. Yeah. <laughs> they're not on the spectrum, let's say that. <laughs> we always say that Isaac, for sure, was one vaccination away from being on, you know, autistic. And so we, we do thank God for that. Um, we, we absolutely learned through it. You started a blog um, called Pain to Purpose. And from Pain to Purpose. From Pain to Purpose. And I definitely want, you know, everyone to go there and read it. You know, tell them how to get there because I think that they'll see what you went through and I think it's uh, good for them to hear. And also, um, an article that we did on methylation and hormones. Read that article. Find that uh, on my website um, at drpompa.com and read that while you're probably there anyway. But uh, read that article because it really tells that story more in depth and talks about the hormones. But your purpose from, uh, your purpose, your blog from Pain to Purpose, that came out of a lot of suffering that we'll never communicate here. Yeah. She's getting teary-eyed right now, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a journey. Mm -hmm. So I, but I absolutely know that God allows certain things in our lives so that yeah. we can um, be more effective and obviously heal from our own past pain and hurts that really often we don't even realize we have. Mm -hmm. And then when they start transferring into how we do life, at a certain point we hit a crossroads and we yeah. realize that it's, it's what God allows for purposes that we couldn't really get to where he desires to take us any other way. So, but it is, it is painful. And I did start writing, um, not really through my own experience with that, but through a, just a, a personal experience we had later and all that it was taking from us and there was just no way to process um, the pain and, and, and the comprehension. It was, it was actually inconceivable what we were going mm -hmm. through and the only way that I can let out what to make any sense of it, to try to put any kind of process in my own mind that could heal me, I know that God we has had, used uh, my writing for. We're not going to get into this story now, but we had adopted some t you know, twins. We had a death in our family, and it changed our life. And um, 
one of the twins that we adopted was, you know, he had some vaccine issues and damage from that, and he was on the autism spectrum. And um, the good news is we applied what we learned to him, and he is another normal child of ours today. Yep. Um, but there was a lot of pain uh, in that process. Absolutely. And so a lot of your blogs that. Well, I, you want to say one more thing, but um, you were going to say something? No, I was, I was just thinking about expectation. Yeah. You know, the thing that I think was really the first hurdle to overcome was understanding that when God shows up and does something through your life and he allows certain challenges, the expectations that you have about your life, you have to step back and, and reprocess and allow that, that to mm -hmm. settle in and then really to surrender and trust him for what he's doing in it. Unmet expectations will always cause some type of bottom to fall off. But you know, with that said, I'll, I'll end with that because I always like to end with that hope. You know, we are only here because of the pain we went through. It gives us such a deep passion and purpose, you know, Absolutely. to change lives. There's no doubt about it. And I know those watching this, you have your story, you have your pain, uh, but God will give you a purpose in it. Matter of fact, when I coach doctors and we even tell our children, always look for your purpose in your pain and your story. I believe in my heart God brought you to this video for a reason. And thank you for sharing because I know it's going to change lives. So thank you.